When they find out that you are who you say you are, they hate you even more. Today, we're talking about people who get close to you just to find cracks in your foundation. Have you ever had that happen to you? You had someone befriend you. They told you how much they admired you. Maybe this was a situation where you met them through business, through a mutual colleague, a mutual friend. Could be somebody you've met online. You were part of online communities. And it seemed like they were so enamored with you, but come to find out that that was a mask for the envy because they wanted to find a crack in your foundation. If you experienced this, put a one in the comments section. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share if you find value here. Let's get this channel to 100,000 subscribers. If you're not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Please subscribe and let's get this channel to 100,000 subscribers. So let's dive right in. One of the most frustrating and baffling things is when you have been nothing but good to someone. Right motives, good, genuine, kind. Nobody's perfect, but you're genuine, kind, good. And your kindness, your generosity was met with hostility. And you found out that the very person who you helped, who you were kind to, who you took under your wing, is the very person trying to sabotage everything you've built, throwing mud on your name, maybe outright lying on you, uh, trying to turn your friend group uh, against one another and trying to actually turn the friend group against you. Maybe they are trying to create division within your family. And you were like, where did this behavior come from? I thought we were cool. Like I actually looked out for you and you repay my kindness with betrayal. Make it make sense. But here's the thing that's important to keep in mind that often goes overlooked. You will have some people who admire you from afar. But sometimes admiration, when it's mixed with coveting, quickly turns into hateration. And that's a dangerous combination because it starts as admiration. Then it becomes coveting because they're around you, seeing the blessings that come to you, seeing the way you do what you do with grace and ease. And then that coveting becomes competing. And they start thinking like, I should have what she has. Actually, it becomes entitlement. They feel entitled to it because they're in proximity to you. And this is why a lot of times you'll hear stories of somebody who's famous and they got it on their own, right? Their siblings did not help them get there. I'm talking about those cases, not cases where your family helped you get there. They may have even had a very uh, toxic relationship with a sibling who constantly beat them down that was just horrific to them and they make it, right? They make it in entertainment or they make it in, in, in terms of they become successful in business financially and now the sibling feels entitled to their money, entitled to the same recognition. But the sibling didn't put in the work. The sibling just feels because they are close to them, right? By way of proximity, meaning they're related. They grew up in the same household. They feel entitled to their money. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't help family. Let's be, let's be very clear. What I am saying is that people shouldn't feel entitled to what's not theirs. So you will have that. And then you will have that sibling write a tell-all book, do everything they can to bring you down because you don't really fool with them. And this could be a situation where you've given them money, you have bailed them out time and time again, and now you put a boundary. Now you're the worst person in the world because you put a boundary and they are going on an all out campaign to smear your name. And so the reason why that happens so often is because usually the people who are the most envious of you are those who are closest to you. Yes, you have haters who hate from afar, absolutely. But you also have haters who are close to you because they're constantly witnessing your blessings. They're constantly witnessing up close and personal how you do what you do with grace and ease. They're constantly witnessing how people respond to you with love and admiration, and it bothers them to the core because they're not receiving that. And 
the thing about a talent is, or the thing about a gift is, your gifts are your gifts. Their gifts are their gifts. And you might be very good at what you do, and they have things that they're good at. But when a person is in that envious space, they can't even see their blessings. They're blind. Envy blinds you. When a person is in that envious mindset, that envious heart space, they can't see the blessings in their own life. And they believe that the reason their life sucks is because of you and you did nothing to them. All you did was follow your dreams, reach for your goals. And I'm not talking about people who step on people. Let's take all of that out the conversation. So we're not talking about people who get ahead by stepping on other people, by using other people. No, we're talking about the kind of person that you got it fair and square. You got it out of the mud. You were working 12 hour days. You had sleepless nights. You gave up weekends. You slept in your car, whatever, whatever the story is. And now you're beginning to have traction. This can be in the area of health and fitness. You got up every morning at 5 a.m. And you hit the gym or you went for long walks. You changed your whole diet. And yes, you like some cheesecake or you like chocolate cake or whatever your thing is. But although you have a taste for it, you passed it up in favor of healthier eating options and now it's a year later and it shows because you lost the whole person and you're sculpted and then there's that family member who is upset with you because you are who you say you are you are getting up at 5 a.m and hitting the gym you are uh being mindful of how you eat you are meal prepping but they want to get close to you to be able to say you're not really doing that. They want to be able to say, oh, well, she took a shortcut. She didn't work out. She got surgery. And, and you know, she's not working out like she says. And she doesn't really meal prep. She's on diet pills. When in reality, that's not your life. She wish it were your life because she wants to have something to feel superior to you about. This is hard for people to grasp. But when we understand human nature, that human beings are human beings before they're the labels, meaning before they're sister, brother, mother, father, co-worker, husband, wife, best friend. Human nature is human nature. It's why the Bible has a lot to say about human nature so that we are not, we are not in the blind and in the dark about that. So it's baffling because when you're good to someone, you're not expecting someone to turn around and just treat you like total trash and not treat you like trash only, but on top of that, to try to sabotage your whole life, try to sabotage anything that's important to you, try to sabotage your business, try to sabotage your ministry, try to sabotage your, your family or friendship group, anything that they think holds meaning and is special to you. They want to penetrate that thing and sabotage it. And so... People become very upset, and I'm talking about envious people, when they find out that you are who you say you are. So when your real life matches the images that you post on Instagram and Facebook, you're not out here styling and profiling and, and making up stories. Your real life matches that. Your real life is peaceful. Your real life is joyful. Your real life, you are working your business and you are enjoying the fruits of your labor your real life is you are actually doing ministry you are in the highways and byways and you are doing ministry whatever that looks like for your particular ministry and they are hoping wishing praying that there are cracks in that foundation and when they can't find any and nobody's no one's life is perfect so we're not talking perfection here but what we are saying is that when you have integrity, when your word is your bond, when you have ethics around how you do business and there are certain things that you won't do, when you hold your own feet to the fire as it relates to keeping your word, there are going to be people who hate that because they don't do that in their own life. They don't keep their word. They don't even keep their word to themselves. But that's not your problem, nor is it your fault. But you will have people who will get close to you to find cracks. So this is why you got to do your due diligence when a person is so bent on wanting to be your friend, wanting to be in your space. You got to do your due diligence to test the spirit because a person can claim they admire you all day, every day. 
but you don't know if that admiration is coupled with coveting and haterism. You don't know that. So you're going to have to take your time to test the spirit. This is key. So let's look at two reasons why this happens, why people get very, very upset. And like I already laid the foundation and basically gave it to you, but we're going to break it down. Why do people get upset when they find out that you are who you say you are? You are living the life that you say you're living. So if it's weight loss, you're doing what you say you're going to do, whatever it is, right? I'm using weight loss because you can see that. So number one, the reason why they become so upset when you are who you say you are is because they're hoping to find a crack in the foundation in order to be able to have something on you to feel superior about. This is hard for people to wrap their mind around, but humans are humans first. So when a person doesn't feel good about themselves, they don't feel good about their life and they see that you are shining, you are blessed, you are doing your thing, you're in a happy uh, marriage, uh, uh, maybe you're, you're single and you're happily traveling and just enjoying your single life. You got kids and you got a great relationship with your kids. Your extended family is close. Whatever the thing, the blessings are in your life. So they're triggered by seeing that and they're getting close to you because, well, nobody's life is like that. No marriage is like that. Nobody's kids love them like that. Nobody, uh, their business stands on ethical principles. Nobody's like that. That's because that's, that's how they are. And they're projecting that onto you. And so they want to have something to feel superior to you about. And so this is why you will have a situation where you could give a sister a ride to church every Sunday, befriend her, open up your home to her, and then find out she's trying to screw your husband. And you're like, huh? Make it make sense. And in her mind, well, he can't really love her that much. He can't be that loyal. So I'm going to test his loyalty and I'm going to come on to him sexually and I'm gonna see if he take the bait because I want him I want him for myself I deserve that because she's seeing how he's treating you and now she wants to infiltrate that and it could be a man as well I'm saying she it could be the opposite that you got a dude around you seeing how your wife is good to you your wife is beautiful beautiful person inside and out and there are plenty of women in the world, but because he has proximity to you, right? He's close to you. He's in the same space. He's seeing how your wife treats you. That's the difference. He's seeing the interaction between you and your wife. And so it is triggering his envy as opposed to saying, you know what y'all got is solid. And I hope to find something like that one day for myself. Or does your wife have a sister or a single friend? You know, I'd like to have somebody like that and let, let, let your wife hook it up. But they don't think like that. They want your wife, not a wife. So that's number one. They want to infiltrate to feel superior and see when a woman makes a, a play, let's say we'll go back to the one. So she makes a play for your husband and she feels superior just because your husband looked at her. He looked for two seconds. So now she's like, oh, I could take him if I want. And maybe he's not even paying her no mind. And she's like, well, you know what? I'm going to keep at it. I'm going to keep at it. And eventually, he's gonna, I'm going to catch him at a weak moment. I'm going to catch him when they have an argument. I'm going to be there to comfort. Look at the plotting that goes into this. And it's all about feeling superior. And it's not like she can't get a man of her own, but she wants your man. Because it is a way to knock you down a notch. And I don't think that people really understand human nature to be, it's not about being paranoid. It is about testing the spirit and not opening your heart to someone right off the bat without knowing what their motives and intentions are and seeing their fruit. The Bible is very clear. The Bible says above all else, guard your heart. The world will talk about opening your heart to everybody. That's not biblical. So you got to make up your mind. Are you following biblical wisdom or are you following what the world says? So if you follow in biblical wisdom, biblical wisdom indicates that above all else, guard your heart for the issues of your life flow from it. So you're supposed to be guarding your emotional life, 
guarding what is near and dear to your heart. You're supposed to guard these things. Just like you put a lock on your door and everybody can't come in and out of your home, your door is locked. There needs to be a lock around your life. And then you decide who gets access to you based on vetting, spiritually. So that's number one. They want to find something to feel superior to you about. So if they can crack that foundation, if they can infiltrate and create some sort of harm to you, then they feel a little superior to you. When you think about the singer Selena and Yolanda, who claimed to be her biggest fan, but was really her biggest hater, Yolanda comes under the guise of friendship, under the guise of I'm your biggest fan. I, I, this is what I can do to help take your business to the next level. This is what I can do to, to help streamline. I mean, those, that's not the wording, but you get the, the gist of what I'm saying. And so she comes in the spirit of helping, but you got to test that spirit because all help ain't good help. She comes in the spirit of wanting to, to support, but all support ain't good support. She comes in the spirit of giving the gift of her time and talent. But there are some gifts that come with strings attached and you've got to discern that. And unfortunately for Selena, as she was beautiful, beautiful voice, made wonderful music and her life was cut short by a hater. So you got to be mindful because where there's envy and self-seeking, there's confusion and every evil work. This is what James 3.16 says, where there is envy and self-seeking, there's confusion and every, every evil work, every evil work. So when somebody is throwing mud on your name that you've been good to, that's evil work. When someone's at the job lying on you because you're very gifted at what you do, you're good at your job and they're jealous because you are rising corporately and now they are lying on your name or they're stealing your work and passing it off as their own, that is evil work. When they're setting you up by you thinking that the meeting is at 9 a.m. and the meeting was changed to 8 and they tell you the meeting is at 9 so that you missed the meeting, that's evil. These are all examples of evil works. It don't have to be at the level of physical murder. They're trying to murder your character. They're trying to murder your joy. They're trying to murder your peace. They're trying to murder your reputation. This is why we call gossip, character assassination, slander. So that's number one. Number two, the fact that you are who you say you are highlights that they're not who they say they are. This is hard. The fact that you truly are who you say you are sheds a light that they're not who they say they are. So if you're a person with a good heart and they're claiming to be a person with a good heart, but actually they have a wicked heart, they're not who they say they are. And it is evident by what you're going through at their hands. It's evident at the fact that they tried to make a sexual play for your partner. It's evident at the fact that they stole money from you. It's evident by the fact that they are trying to turn your friend group against you by telling lies on you. It's evident by the fact that they're trying to steal your work and pass it off as their own. And then get wickedly upset when you confront them. And so the fact that you are who you say, I need you to hear this. This is, this is it. Number two, the fact that you are who you say you are highlights that they are not who they say they are. So they may come to you in the spirit of friendship, but they're really your rival in disguise. So they're not who they say they are. They come to you in the spirit of cooperation and wanting to learn and build with you. But really, they want to compete against you and bring you down. So they're not who they say they are, but you are who you say you are. And every time you operate in integrity, every time you show up on time, every time you do what you say you're going to do, you set a goal and you actually accomplish it. You are putting in the work. You are staying up working 12 hour days sometimes. You don't get to go to all the fun things that you want to go to because you're in a season of building. And so while this person is having fun, hanging out, doing this, doing that, you are focused on growing your business. And that's fun to you. That's your type of fun because it fuels your purpose. It fuels your meaning. But they don't see it that way. They see it as everything comes easy to you when in fact 
You are a, a diligent, hard worker. But they don't want to work hard. See, they claim that they're they claim that they want to work hard, work smart, but they don't. They just want to get it handed to them. So the fact that you are who you say you are highlights that they are not who they say they are. This is why they get so triggered when you have integrity. This is why you'll have a group of people be at the job and they all gossiping about somebody. And they are ragging on this person. And this person has done nothing to them. Let's just say it's an attractive woman because you know how some women can get when an attractive woman comes in the room. So this woman is attractive, minding her business, trying to get some coffee in the, in the, in the, in the cafeteria where you all work. And here come miserable, miserable, we'll give her name, miserable Mindy. And she is ragging on her. And the other women are chiming in. And you looking like, that's not cool. Like, like you just looking like, wow, you, you, that's not cool. And then the woman walks over. Hi, how are you? Oh, I love your dress. And as soon as she walks away, well, you know, the skirt is too tight. She's too big. Her butt too big for her to be wearing skirts like that. No, 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 no. And the thing is, why are you being fake? Then don't say nothing to her. But don't sit there and compliment and act like you cool with her. And you're ragging on her in the next breath. And you're witnessing this. And the fact that you don't participate in the gossip and dare you give her a compliment when actually I think she looks nice and I like her shoes. Now you a villain. Because it highlights the fact that they're hating. They're trying to pretend that they're not hating and they're actually saying, no, I'm not hating. I'm just saying that it's inappropriate for the workplace. And let's say that what the person has on is not inappropriate. They can't help how they're built. You can't help. If you're shapely, you, you, you can't help that. You're built how you're built. And let's say they have a blazer, but, but even with the blazer, you can see what they're working with. They got a blazer on, covering up, but you can still see what they're working with. And the fact that they are envious of her and you are not because you know you hold your own. You can see someone who's prettier than you, who's younger than you, but you know you hold your own. And so you don't feel threatened by nobody because you hold your own. And so you can look at somebody else and say, you're doing your thing. I like what you got on. But because they're not in that space and you are who you say you are, you're exuding with the confidence. But they're not because they're sitting there slamming another woman who, did, who, who, has, who has not done anything to them. It highlights how wicked their hearts are, how jealous they are. So now not only are they upset with her, they're mad at you. Because you are who you say you are. So I hope that begins to help. And I want to again stress the scripture, James 3.16, where there's envy and self-seeking, there's confusion and every evil work. So do not be surprised. And I'm going to give you one more scripture. That's 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. And it says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit. But test the spirits, whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. So just because somebody comes into your life and they tell you they're coming in the spirit of friendship, they may not use the word spirit of friendship. They may say, I admire you. And I've always, you know, I think we're like minded. So they may use other verbiage, but they're trying to pretend they're coming to you in the spirit of sincerity and genuineness when in fact their heart is wicked and they have ulterior motives. So it says, beloved, do not believe every spirit. So the world will say, give people the benefit of the doubt. But that is not biblical. And again, you got to make up your mind. Are you following what the world says? Or are you taking your wisdom from the Bible? So it says, beloved, do not believe every spirit. So the scripture is saying, don't believe every spirit. Don't believe a person is genuine without testing that. Don't believe a person is sincere without testing that. Don't believe a person is coming to you with the right motives. You don't know them from a can of paint. Beloved, even in church, you don't know them from a can of paint. There are plenty of demons in the church. We need to do a series called Demons in the Church. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Now, a false prophet is not limited to somebody making a false prophecy in a pulpit church ministry setting. That is one form of a false prophet, of course. But a false prophet also includes somebody who's professing something that is not true. So someone can profess that they're coming with a sincere and genuine heart and their heart may be full of envy, full of coveting what you have. So you got to test that. You, you, you got to vet that. So with that being said, 
Be mindful. Vet people. Don't let everybody that run up in your life with a good story of how much they admire you and how much they like you. You don't know that. Of course, we are to be cordial, right? We are to be cordial. We are to walk in love. You can walk in love and be a loving person and still be very boundary. Walking in love doesn't mean walking with no boundaries. Walking in love doesn't mean automatically opening yourself up. We are supposed to guard our hearts to everybody that comes into your personal space. So you're pleasant. Hey, good morning. How are you? You can make pleasant small talk. Absolutely. And as time goes on and you're getting to know the person, you will see if they're a right friendship fit. You will see if they're a right fit to do business with, if that's what it is. You will see if they, they are the right fit to work on a particular project with. You will see that over time. You will discern that. So with that being said, I want to let you know about uh, an upcoming event that we are having for our Wednesday Wellness Club members. So if you are not a member of the Wednesday Wellness Club, you're really missing out. The Wednesday Wellness Club is a feature of the Cassandra Mack YouTube channel. Being a member of the channel is one of the tiers. And in the Wellness Club tier, you get access to our Wednesday Wellness Club meetings. And we meet twice a month by conference call. And we focus on mental well-being, self-care, emotional well-being through a biblical lens. And it is cheaper than therapy. So it's a therapeutic group. And if you think about therapy, which can cost an upwards of two fifty dollars for one hour, you are getting beyond a bargain to be part of the well, beyond a bargain to be part of the Wednesday Wellness Club. So that happens the first and third Wednesday of every month. And uh, you get to connect with like minded people who are focusing on we are all focusing on better well-being, better well-being through a biblical framework. So I would encourage you to do that. And in our Wednesday Wellness Club, we have an event coming up. Let me pull up the calendar. What date is it? It is the first Thursday in November. What day is that? That is November 7th. So November 7th, we have a self-care coloring class. So we're going to be working from my book, The Self-Care. I'm sorry, the, uh, the color. What is my book called? The Self-Care Coloring Book for Grownups. That's the name of the book. So we're going to be working from one of the pages of that book. We're going to be coloring one of the pages. And we're going to be talking about uh, what's on that page. We're going to be talking about the scripture. We're going to be talking about what's on that page. And uh, that is going to happen again November 7th, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's Eastern Standard Time. So if you're in a different time zone, just make that adjustment. This is going to be a Zoom event. My Zoom events, you are required to be on camera. So if you know that you are camera shy... You might want to opt out of this one because you'll need to be on camera to be able to remain in the Zoom event. That is the requirement. So if you're camera shy, then just join us on the Wednesday Wellness uh, Club meetings, the first and third Wednesday of every month where you're not on camera and it's a conference call that might be a better fit for you. So we're going to have an amazing time. We're going to be coloring. We're going to be sipping. Now, let me be clear. I'm going to be sipping on some tea, whatever y'all sip on. That's your business. You might be having a cup of I'm minding my business. You could just say, I'm having a cup of mind in my business, but I'm going to be having a cup of tea. And we're going to uh, have an amazing day. And uh, we're going to be talking about some self-care tools to begin to put in place as you prepare for the holidays. Because the holidays can be a source of joy for a lot of people. But for a lot of people, the holidays can be triggering. And uh, let's see, what else do we have going on? On November 4th, we have our Winter Circle meeting. That's also a Zoom meeting. That's happening Monday, November 4th, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, lunchtime. 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you're in a different time zone, just figure out the adjustment on the Winter Circle. And we're going to be talking about selling from a place of servanthood. So the Winter Circle is primarily for entrepreneurs. That's who it's geared for. It is geared for Christian, faith-based entrepreneurs and leaders so maybe you're a podcaster you have a youtube channel perhaps you're a self-published author uh perhaps uh you create videos uh you're a content creator creating uh content on various social media maybe you have a brick and mortar business uh whatever the business is right maybe it's tax preparation whatever your business is uh 
you, you might do hair and nails, whatever. So if you're an entrepreneur, we're going to talk about how do you sell from a place of servanthood and what are some biblical principles for business? The Bible does talk about money, doing business, that that's in there. So we're going to be talking about that on November 4th at 12 p.m. in the Winner's Circle tier. You have to be part of the Winner's Circle tier. And again, that is geared primarily for entrepreneurs and leaders, the subject matter there. And it is Zoom and the Zoom events are required to be on camera. So if you are camera shy, you may want to be in a different tier. That, that tier wouldn't make sense for you. So also, if you want some more tools just to really know how to deal with haters in general, if you find you're getting a lot of hate, pick up the book, Rise Above the Haters. It's a journal that walks you through the process of how to become hater proof how to really begin to develop the inner resources to rise, even though you have people that don't want to see you win. And uh, that's available on Amazon, Rise Above the Haters. So with that being said, have an amazing day. Take care of yourselves and each other. Keep your head up. Talk to you soon. No matter who you are, you will have haters. John 15 verse 18 says, If the world hates you, know that it hated Jesus first. So if you have haters, know that God is greater than your haters. Lately you've been feeling, feeling the way of your haters coming at you with their envy and their hate, scheming against you. Throwing mud on your name But God's gonna work it out Despite their lies and gain God is greater So much greater than your haters God is greater Don't give up, it'll pay off later God is greater Through the pain you're a giant slayer Let the haters hate While you elevate Ain't no mind your goals keep rising keep shining your haters can't stop no show they can hate all they want to remember you are blessed never let a hater see you sweat cause this is just a test god is greater so much greater than your haters god is greater don't give up it'll pay in your mind Run your race with grace one day at a time They can laugh and they can mock you but you won't disappear When people don't receive you shake the dust off your feet God is greater so much greater than your